We're going to overview the possibility of inducing remyelination using stem cell therapy. Specifically, we're going to discuss a paper that was published in the journal Brain by Woodhu et al. Uh, describing the use of Schwann cells and Schwann cell precursors. So, why do we need remyelination? Well, the problem is there's a lot of diseases, for example, multiple sclerosis, where demyelination occurs. And the myelin sheath acts as an insulator for the neurons to be able to transmit signals. And what happens is when the myelin sheath is, is destroyed or damaged, then the signals do not transmit properly between axons. Now, in the central nervous system, the myelin sheath is made and maintained by oligodendrocytes, whereas in the peripheral nervous system, it is made and maintained by Schwann cells. And in various uh, central nervous system conditions um, and in animal models, there have been experiments using Schwann cells in order to induce remyelination in the central nervous system. So taking the peripheral nervous system cells that produce myelin and putting them in the central nervous system. However, this has only worked with marginal success. So the question of the paper is whether Schwann cell precursors can induce CNS remyelination and whether they work better, the precursors or the stem cells, whether they work better than um, normal Schwann cells or adult Schwann cells. So the bottle, there's a rat, the rats uh, are induced, the spinal cord injury is induced by injection of the chemical ethidium bromide into the spinal cord. This causes destruction of the myelin. And in order to heal this, there is administration of Schwann cells or Schwann cell precursors at the site of injury. Both the Schwann cells and the Schwann cell precursors are from GFP, green fluorescent protein transgenic donors, so that we can follow them, so the authors can follow them and see uh, if they differentiate and what they do, because they're going to be the only green cells in the non-green recipient. So initially the authors demonstrated that after transplantation of the green cells into the um, directly implanted into the injured spinal cord, at one month there is still green Schwann cells. The um, next question is whether the Schwann cells can make myelin and again this is uh, one month after injection of Schwann cells and the first one is GFP staining and you are uh, only looking at GFP you can see it's green so the Schwann cells are there. The Schwann cells do make myelin because this is staining with anti-myelin antibody and when you double stain you see that the green cells are the ones making myelin so myelin production is made by Schwann cells. Uh, the same thing with Schwann cell precursors at one month they survive and they also make myelin. Now, interestingly, the Schwann cell precursors, when you do electron microscopy, the myelin, the type of myelin they make, appears to be similar to the myelin made in the peripheral nervous system, not central nervous system myelin. So it's saying that the Schwann cell precursors, they produce myelin, but it's peripheral nervous system myelin. Now, the question is because they are precursor cells, the Schwann cell precursors were stem like were stem cells, then what if they differentiate into other types of cells? Or do they only differentiate into Schwann cells? So here is a staining at the area of lesion, uh, GFP. Then when you stain with an antibody to S100B, which is a marker of Schwann cell maturation, you see that the cells only made mature Schwann cells, and this is double staining GFP plus the S100B. Uh, the Schwann cells do not differentiate into non-Schwann cells. This is demonstrated in part uh, the GFP, as you can see on the left panel. In the middle, the red is antibody to nestin. Schwann cells express nestin and um, double staining. So the Schwann cells, if, if you were to see in the middle, green, and I mean in, on the right hand side, if you were to see green and green cells which were not also red, that would imply that the, the transplanted Schwann cells are becoming something else besides just mature Schwann cells. But because you can see only yellow on the right hand side, it means that all the cells that you injected, at least the ones that are being looked at, became Schwann cells. 
And the next question now, we're beginning to con compare the difference in persistence. So the A and B is the Schwann cells, and C and D is the Schwann cell precursors. The, the red staining is myelin basic protein, and the green staining is GFP. And you can see in one month, there is a decrease in the number of green cells when you look at the at the recipients of Schwann cells. When you look at the recipients of Schwann cell precursors, although there is a decrease, the decrease is not nearly as, as big. So it's, it's saying this figure in the paper saying that Schwann cell precursors persist in the injured tissue a lot longer than they do, than, than do uh, Schwann cells themselves. Now the next question is whether they actually interdigitate, whether they actually begin functioning with the recipient tissue. So on the right hand side is Schwann cell precursors and the green ones are Schwann cell precursors GFP donor. Uh, the red is astrocytes, recipient astrocytes. And as you can see on the right hand side in B the Schwann cell precursor seems to interdigitate at least um, based, based on morphology seems like they're interdigitating whereas the Schwann cells do not interdigitate with the astrocytes. And in terms of spreading activity, after you inject these uh, cells, the Schwann cells, they start, they're supposed to cover the nerve and start making myelin, but also to protect the nerve. And um, as you can see, uh, the open boxes are the Schwann cells, gener uh, the Schwann cell precursors, whereas the black boxes are the, uh, the Schwann cells themselves. And as you can see, at one month and at and even higher at two months, there is a much higher level of spreading from the Schwann cell precursor cells as opposed to the normal Schwann cells. So in conclusion, Schwann cell precursors are superior to Schwann cells in terms of persistence, astrocyte integration, and spreading. Now the next question is going to be in terms of clinical um, implementation is how to generate different types of Schwann cell precursors that can be used. Other questions is do the Schwann cells can they be gen Schwann cell precursors can they be made in an autologous manner? Is it possible to use allergenic ones? And various other questions like that exist. Thank you very much.